Hi friends, this is Caitlin. I'm so excited to be back with you and honestly, I didn't expect to make this video. I was going to take a week off. Um, life has been crazy. Work has been crazy. <laughs> we had a stomach bug come through our house and I've been dealing with a cold off and on or a cough or whatever. And I realized halfway through the week that I hadn't filmed a video and I felt like there was no time and I was too tired and I didn't have my mojo. And um, yeah, I kind of had given up on a video this week and figured I would just, you know, post next week and ask forgiveness. <laughs> and um, then after my live uh, the other night, I was on the phone with my mom and normally I craft while I talk to her or watch YouTube videos or both. And I was like, you know what? What if I just made a very simple card? Clean and simple has never been my style. Um, but maybe if I just kept it simple for me uh, and don't put the pressure that I have to finish it, maybe I just film it and I can, you know, use it for a reel or uh, maybe it never sees the light of day. But maybe while I'm sitting here, I'll just color because crafting and coloring has always been um, a huge stress reliever for me. And in, I feel like I've put a lot of pressure on myself because I want this channel to do great. I want to represent the companies I work with um, in a wonderful way and support them. But I, the reason I got into card making was for my mental health and as a way to relieve stress. Um, and so I figured I would just kind of lean on that. And so this is the card that I made. And I love it, and I'm excited to be able to share it with you. So I stamped out this super sweet image from Purple Onion Designs. I am on that design team. Um, and this was sent to me, but not to use for a video, just to create with. And I don't know why, but I am on a serious orange cat kick right now. Like the orange cat trend, like crazy feisty orange cats is just all over like my TikTok and stuff. Um, and so I have been loving coloring orange cats and playing with different color combinations. So this one particularly I think turned out great. I love using those E90 markers. I don't usually find myself drawn to them, but I think for a little kitty like this, it is absolutely perfect. I will have all of the products I used and the colors that I use listed down in the description box for you. You can always find um, them down there. And I don't have affiliate links with Purple Onion, um, but some of my links in the description always might be affiliate links, which is just a way you can help support my channel that doesn't cost you anything if you decide to shop. So I... I uh, had kind of picked out this lawn fawn pattern paper that I'll show you here in a minute. Um, and so I used, I knew I wanted to do something with either the yellow or the blue or both from that. So I used those colors from the pattern paper to kind of dictate the rest of my drawing um, or my color choices from, you know, besides the cat. So I went with just a true blue denim, and I think I've talked about this before recently, but I love the B90s for denim. They're the perfect denim to me. Um, and I, because I was leaning towards the yellow, I went for some classic yellow kind of rain boot style boots here. I don't know about you, um, but I am, I've been over winter for a while. I'm especially over winter now. <laughs> We had like a one fifty eight degree day this week, and I, um, you know, I'm officially mentally in spring mode. So this little cute cat with his big giant bunch of flowers and his rain boots is definitely giving me the spring feels, and I love the spring vibes. And I think I'm officially transitioned out of any and all winter cards, um, and I will now be diving full force into spring. And then, you know, in a couple months, I'll probably start summer early because that's just how I am. So I kept the, um, the kind of wrapping around the bouquet very neutral and soft, um, but then I felt there wasn't enough contrast. So I brought in just a touch of a warm gray W3 marker for some shadow. And I think that that's something we forget that you can always add in one of the grays or a couple of the grays on top of your colors to add that shadow in depth. 
um, if you don't feel like you have uh, a marker that will do that for you in that set color range, don't be afraid to bring in a gray because all shadows are naturally gray. So if you're layering it on top of color that's already there, it's a lovely way to add in a little extra depth and kind of fill any gaps in your marker collection. Um, I went for some very soft neutral greens as well, a little more on the desaturated side or unsaturated. And then I wanted to stick with some classic daisies. So I went with yellow centers um, and instead of really stressing myself out about how to shade those daisies, I just brought in an N2 marker and kind of dotted around the center section and that by itself gave me enough definition because there's so much detail packed into this drawing by the artist that I really didn't need to do anything extra because these were just beautiful white daisies. So I did want to create a kind of a scene for this little kitten to live in, but I was not mentally prepared to go crazy and create a whole world. So I just went with a little grassy hill and the simplest sky. <laughs> so I started off with my G43 going in. Um, again, I liked this because it's kind of a softer, more neutral green. It's not super on the blue side, it's not bold, and it definitely isn't super green based or yellow based. Um, for my shadows, I went with a G99, just adding in some stripes of that around as well as under the boots. And I left a little gap under the tail like between the tail and the shadow, just so it looks like the tail is up in the air. I just thought that was kind of cute. I added some G85 to blend that out, and I'm not positive this was like the best color combo for this, but once I went over everything a couple times with that G43 to kind of smush it all together, I did really like the end result. It just took a little bit more work to get there. But I also know that I don't have all of the G markers kind of in that range. Um, so I just worked with what I had. And I knew I was going to be using this square frame die from um, Pink and Main. So I traced the top of it so I would know how high to keep my sky. Because I knew I wanted kind of a vignette feel where there's more color on the outer edges um, and the top. And then lighter in the center. So I did kind of a rough shade in with that light, very light blue. I lined up my dye and trimmed it out. And then once I had that cut out, I went back in with my blues and kind of built that color a little bit more just on those outer edges. This was one of those times where I liked that you coloring up against the edge of my paper meant that the ink was going to concentrate more on those edges. Um, I used it to my advantage this time and a little colorless blender around the middle made sure I got a nice smooth blend. Um, with the purple onion stamps, they are a red rubber, so they are unmounted. So I use my stamping um, pad. I don't remember the exact name. I'll have it linked in the description below. I love this thing. It makes everything so much easier. If it gets um, dusty, you can just wash it in the sink and let it air dry and it'll be sticky again. It's the same clear um, stuff that they make like clear stamps out of. It's just a giant sheet of it and you can hook it right to your misty door or like it's, it will stick to your misty door and then your stamps will stick to it. Um, and yeah, this is how I keep my purple onion stamps, especially my sentiment ones. It just kind of helps me keep organized. I know which stamps are in which stamp pocket. And I just have some um, press and seal in there, like reversed, like glued in backwards to my paper so that the stamps kind of generally lightly stick and stay mostly in place. Um, I have to go through and like really reorganize these though because I've gotten um, Purple Onion has had a couple really amazing releases in the last like six months and I have been slacking on organizing my new stamps into <laughs> their correct spots. So I decided on the yellow tone on tone polka dot from Lawn Fawn. I love this paper it's just so sweet and then these are the scalloped square layering dies from pink and main so you cut two of the scallop edges and have them the same way and then you just rotate one 90 degrees 
and then they line up to make a perfect scallop. And when you set the little square, the stitched line square on top, you can't tell that it's not one solid piece. Like you don't see any of the edges. And I just think that very dainty little scallop on the edge was the perfect accent to this card. Now I did attempt going in with sequins, <laughs> like yellow and white sequins kind of around the frame. And I decided for probably the first time in a long time that it was just too much and it was better to leave this simple and sweet and let the scene kind of stand on its own. And I was just so happy. For me, this card took about 45 minutes, which for me is a very simple card. It was like one phone call with my mom and one, you know, short YouTube video and it was done. Um, I will tell you, I am running low on my pink and main tape. So I used this tape from like Michael's that's been sitting under my desk for a while and it was so sticky and so hard to use and so gross. I will be immediately placing another order for my pink and main tape because that's never been an issue um, with that one before. So if you need a new foam tape, I can definitely recommend pink and mains. Don't go to Michael's unless you have to. Um, so I went in with my T-square to make sure that my little scalloped square was straight and that just brings this whole card together. So I guess my overall goal in this card is to encourage you that if you're feeling in a funk or you feel like your mojo is lacking, um, maybe just start off with something small if you feel like you do still want to craft and you just don't know where to start and don't feel like you have to commit to this huge project or it won't be worth your time because I promise it will. It definitely made me feel better. So with that in mind, I hope that you have an amazing weekend. Happy crafting and I'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.